what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel today we got the whole squad here why because we're gonna be doing a swap in my cousin's car right there if you guys haven't seen the last video be sure to go back and check it out we kind of revealed some things that uh, we've been hiding from you guys for quite some time but you know what I'm gonna tell you guys right here anyways we are gonna be doing an all-wheel drive setup on my cousin's car right there and today is gonna be the first step of uh, his all-wheel drive conversion and that is to put his new motor in his car Guys, so we got the car up on the driveway. We got these squad right here ready to work. They're like, yo, you better hurry up and record your little segment so we can get down to business. You know what I'm saying? Look at this fool. He's got his clothes all ready to go. <laughs> So the motor is in my cousin's car right here is a junkyard block It's an LS stock piston stock rods and it's got a stock type R head on it We got the Nomus industry coil pack system. We have an eBay GTX 3582R I love fat mini ram manifold three inch down pipe eBay intercooler system Thousand cc precision injectors and this car on 14 and a half pounds and made 361 wheel horsepower The car did go to 11.7 now this engine is still good with this new motor. He's gonna look forward um, North of 400, right? Yeah, he's gonna look for north of 400 not too crazy in power But because we're going all with drive 400 horsepower is definitely enjoyable You know how I know this is enjoyable because I had a 400 horsepower all drive car and he's felt it too Yep, that's correct <laughs> <laughs> So knowing that this motor is still running at least we can have another good block to do another build later down the road Instead of having to source another motor or destroying this one Which then could potentially destroy the head and everything else attaching to it So we're gonna get down to pulling this whole engine out guys And I think the goal for this video is to pull this engine out plant everything there get that one back in this car and turned on I just like the sound of it. Alright guys, so these dudes are going to be um, taking the rest of the engine apart. So we're not dropping the engine just yet because we have to take the pan off since we don't have a crane or um, we don't have uh, an engine stand. So we're going to pull the pan off to switch this one to that motor over there. And then we're going to take the head off to make it easier to take the block and the tranny without jacking the car up super high. While they do that, I'm going to check the head gasket on the block real quick. I do have one right here. Big shout out to Jeremy because he bought this from me a little while back. And this head gasket is actually an 82 mil because my block is 82 mil and his is also 82 mil. So I'm going to grab it out these boxes here real quick so this is the head gasket um it doesn't specify like b18c1 or whatever but it is bought for b18c1 and it's an 82 mil right there and this one also doesn't say up so big hole on the driver's side these two guys line up here these holes these holes Hey Daniel, this is perfect. These uh, holes are big enough for the VTEC dial pin. That's awesome. Oh, <laughs> almost palm. <laughs> yeah, money. <laughs> yeah. That looks good. That's a junk car motor right there. <laughs> hey. Budget belt. This makes it a lot easier without the cylinder head. I don't have to jack up the car too high. We're maxed. How far? So you guys know that when you go all-wheel drive, you have to get all-wheel drive specific motor mounts. And as far as I know, the only company that has an all-wheel drive mount kit is Hasport. So we're going to be ditching these motor mounts here, which he's been running for how long now? Man, since the HMO uh, ITR motor, right? Like what? Five, six years ago? 2015. 2015, these motor mounts. Yeah. So the only bush I had to change out was this guy right here to a stiffer one because it got destroyed like a year ago. And uh, these are still the original like 65 or something. But we're going to be switching these out for the EKB3 AWD motor mounts from Hasport right here. And uh, the kit also includes the T bracket, which is like one of the you know main things to the all-wheel drive transmission so once we get those all taken out guys we're gonna get these installed 
All right, guys, so my cousin got the oil sandwich plate. This is for the VTEC line. We got the uh, T fitting on here for the turbo line. And half shaft is installed, alternator, chain to crank pulley because the belt size. And uh, right now I'm going to do the transfer case so we don't have to worry about crawling underneath the car to do it upside down. So this is pretty simple. It uses um, RTV. Glob it nice and clean here, you know, smear it all the way across and then uh, like I've always said before rule of thumb is Make sure to squeeze that all around so you know that the whole perimeter is secured and this uses four bolts to the transmission And then there's this little brown bracket That's like kind of an extra support Right goes to one of the bottom bolts here and then this guy gets bolted up to the block with a uh, 12 mils right there so I'm gonna go ahead and just do all this real quick and uh, this thing is pretty much ready to roll back underneath the car and be installed transfer case installed bracket installed smear out everywhere what the hell is that your Nokia bro what <laughs> we got the motor mounts installed this right here is gonna go in last um, this one probably gonna oh yeah this one right here we had to take off the studs from the post mount because the provided hardware is all Allen heads so uh, I took all that out with two 14 mil nuts right there. Motor is ready to go in guys right there. They're about to jack up the car, but Tyga is inside over here doing the uh, K-Tune base plate for the TSX shifter. You got both holes drilled out? Yep. Nice, since you're installing this, you're gonna go underneath the car to bolt it up too, right? Yep. Hell yeah, brother, because you're the skinniest one here. I mean, yep. son is skinny too, but you know what I'm saying? I don't know between him and him, who's gonna fit under the car? Him, <laughs> him? All right. Pick up time time belt time belt. We're gonna have to shift shoot. Yeah, the uh, jacks in the way. <laughs> Guys, these motor mounts has been a pain to go. align. This, that, and that. The bottom one, these little big ones right there. They were super hard to get it to thread in, but we were able to. We also noticed that this becomes really close to the frame. Actually, you know what? I think it's frame banging. I don't know if you guys can see that. Holy crap. But nonetheless, all the bolts are in place, and uh, now we can button it up, do all the backside, studs, center head. Get it, dang, get it! Hi, Daniel. Hi. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Oh boy, look tired, man. It takes a lot of time and effort to build budgets. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, every car has a budget for sure. Depends on how you do it, though. A shout out to all the haters. <laughs> so if you're hating out there, full suck it. <laughs> Simon, S I M O N. Oh, clever. No way. We just no fucking figured it, it out today. No we were today old. Yeah, <laughs> That's just clever as hell. I do. If you guys don't know the No Miss Industry cockpit, right here, show us the pic. Show us. Show us. No Miss Industry. No Miss is Simon Backward, the owner of No Miss Industry. S I M O N. No Miss is Simon Backward. No. No. How you spell race car backwards? Race car. How you spell race car backwards? Oh my gosh. Daniel, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Really? I'm just turning a couple things and hoping for the best. Either it's gonna go or it's gonna blow. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Where's the flux capacitor, fool? In the trunk. In the trunk. Okay. All right, guys. So where did we leave off last night? So right here in the engine bay, we literally have almost everything installed. Now we didn't get to turn it on yesterday because we don't have an oil pan gasket, which we are going to be doing today, and also um, having to remodify the downpipe for the transfer case. But other than those two main things, it's just oil battery charge pipe and new spark plugs i'm starting off a little earlier here my cousin's still at home with his daughters um they're still catching up on rest and i'm gonna modify the down pipe right now to get it kind of ready um to be turned on um before he gets here because i may have to leave so i'm gonna knock that out right now and um i'm sure he can take care of the rest of this i'll leave the camera here with him if i take off so he can record the rest of it but right now let's get down with the down pipe so his current down pipe is a three inch transition down to a two and a half because 
his full exhaust system is two and a half and he has a gtx 3582 r which is a three inch outlet because i think the exhaust housing is an 82 and uh this is going to change eventually because we're going to have to redo a whole new exhaust system once the drive shaft goes into place so right now what i'm going to have to do is i think i'm going to have to cut it here or kind of where this bend is at right because this is going to be pointing right at the transfer case i guess the way i designed this downpipe was kind of meant to be for all the drive look at that this is bolted that one right here is bolted this stud is through i'm sure that one lines up the fourth bolt at the top and uh it's no gaps and here's the downpipe i got one bolt in there right now it does not get in the way of the flange right and the only thing touching is the flex pipe to one of the bolt heads right here and I don't need to modify this. <laughs> That's sick. Oh, damn. What's going on? Hey, cut. What the? Oh, shit. What the? Hey, you guys are in the wrong turf. Where's my, where's Lucy at? Oh my God. Uh oh, this is, this is not good. This is not good. What, are you kidding me? Oh shit, where's Lucy? I gotta go find my cat. Even they know it's not a three street. <laughs> He's like, how am I supposed to get through this gate? They're headed to the fence, the gate. Hell yeah. All right, guys, so the K2 base plate is secured into place. These two back bolts lines up with the two current holes for the rear shifter bushing. These two in the front, you got to drill it out once these guys are aligned. And these are aligned. These were drilled out. I just bolted these guys down nice and secured. And this allows the uh, bolt holes to line up with these guys here. It also comes with these spacers and bolts right here. So I'm gonna install this, probably gonna have to pull the cable off because I don't know where the cable is gonna be running yet. So gotta take all this stuff apart right here so we can figure out where we gotta drill the hole for the cables to go under the car and over to the transmission. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these guys down right here with the hardware and uh, see where we go from there. So, I'm not sure where the other stir clip is at. This thing right here is supposed to lock um, the cables into the bracket. This one is here, this one's gone. I tightened this up enough to where it's not moving nice and snug. And I have the cables ran already connected to the transmission. So the hole that I drilled out is on the tunnel itself. I'll take you guys underneath the car in a minute here, but I was gonna go straight across over there, but um, really don't have any leverage to drill a hole through the firewall, so instead I went underneath. And uh, I think I used like a two inch hole saw. No, that doesn't look like, yeah, maybe it's a two inch hole saw. So right here, guys, we have the hole cut out big enough to fit the head of the joint of the cable. Through that, I used two hoses split in half to kind of protect it from um, the edge of the metal so it doesn't cut into the cable. And then we have it running through uh, the subframe on the firewall right here, going up into the trans. 
and then over here we have it on the transmission connected uh, I have one of the clip on here this one I had to use a cotter pin because I don't know where that's at when he got the shifter box assembly it didn't come with the original box I think Tyga uh, left it in his garage somewhere so maybe all the harbors are in there but it is secured into place not going to move uh, these guys are all tightened down as well too and uh, the bracket is also secured into place everything seems to shift like it should shift knob is loose right now third fourth fifth reverse freaking awesome the only thing i could do as of right now is probably the charge pipe and put the center console back on the down pipe we know it fits i'm gonna take it back out right now just to have it all ready for him when he gets here he can do the oil pan gasket put the oil pan back in and then we can reconnect the down pipe to the exhaust system and fluids down pipe is bolted to the exhaust so my cousin just did the oil pan you can see this is that fail pro um gasket that has that little um metal in between aluminum or steel i don't know what it is the first time i've ever seen it in person but he got that installed pan is fastened return line is done i just zip tied the shift cables out of the exhaust's way so we don't burn it i still gotta pull it through a little bit more but other than that he just loaded up a base map and i think i think we're ready fluids in and let's see if it turns on Thing is sounding awesome guys we're bleeding the cooling system out right now the fan cycled once already uh, we tightened up the power steering um, belt because it was wobbling we got the timing set to 16 degrees and uh, we're letting this cycle go through right now and then we're gonna drain it and then we're gonna refill it with um, some fresh oil guys so we're pretty much wrapped up for today my cousin took the car around the block and he was trying to dial in the map a little bit we were going to take it out of the block and go to tiger's house because we thought the whole time the battery was just completely dead um but his battery is two years old and we slapped one of my batteries in it and then uh we found out that the alternator um isn't fully charging as you guys can see it is only reading about 13 1. it's slowly dying because just a minute ago it was 13 8 13 9 and it's uh 
It's it's for sure not charging. He couldn't dial in the map because you're running low on voltage when you get past 3,000 RPMs. But nonetheless, the car runs, drives, shifts, no weird noises. Everything seems to be checked out, and uh, we're super stoked that this thing is uh, you know up and going in like 24 hours. You know, with everybody's hand and help on deck, we made this possible, and uh, he can take his car home today. But there's definitely a lot more to come guys. We got the all wheel drive portion. We have the fuel system portion of it. And uh, hopefully once we get the alternator situated, we're gonna go warranty it because it is still under warranty. We'll hopefully try to get you guys some street tuning, at least get the car to be dialed in a little bit so you can put some mileage on it. But we are gonna end the video right here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you guys wanna stick around for everything else to come, actually, I'm probably gonna continue on the CRX until this car is ready to come back for the fuel system but if you guys want to stick around for the all-wheel drive conversion be sure to hit the subscribe button now but with that being said thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace